Good morning, Christopher. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Excellent. How are you this morning? Very well. Thank you so much for being with me today. Yes. Thank you for having me. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm, I want to start off by saying my, my daughter loves basketball and is a huge fan of yours. So first off, thanks for being oh, such nice. a, a big role model for girls out there and, and showing them kind of um, through, through what you've done in your career and um, what you're doing now. Uh, the the positive aspects of sports and um, and and that, and everything else that you're doing. So thank you for that. Thank you. I appreciate um, that. How old is your daughter? I have a um, I've got two actually. Um, oh. The and uh, I've got a 11 year old and a an seven and a half year old. Oh nice. My, my 11 year old is the basketball person. Uh, she's <laughs> she's into basketball. She's into soccer. She's into pretty much every sport. Yeah, she's very I love different it. than. Very different than her parents, but yeah. um, but she but she loves it and uh, loves hitting hitting the courts and shooting up the baskets and that's and, awesome. uh, and practicing and so so it's always good to to have <coughs> excuse me role models mm -hmm. that she can look up to and and uh, positive role models that she can look up to. So thank you for that. Yeah, that's awesome. You know the second tell her thing, I said uh, hi. <laughs> oh, I will. I will. You know, the second thing I want to talk to you about, because I know you've become a really big advocate for, for spending quality time, and I, and I think that's really important, too. And um, one of the things that I know you're talking about today with me is talking about having family meals together. Yeah. Now, why do you feel that that is so important these days? I believe that having family meals together is very important because our, our kids are not um, able to communicate as well as they, I think, that we could as kids because they're so engaged in their devices. And so that's why uh, Boston Market and I have the initiative to log out and look up is to log out of their devices, put them away, put your phones away, and engage more. We know that it takes about 22 minutes to have a meal so why not use that time to really get to know your children better, to be able to sometimes even influence your children with your values and beliefs by having conversations, and also using that time to play games. You can just, having your kids sitting down and having a consistent meal and using that time to talk is very important. You know, are there, sometimes like you said, it's, it's difficult, especially as kids get older, to yeah. break down those barriers and to talk about and to, to get into their world and with two kids yourself mm -hmm. are there tips that you have that that have worked for you as a parent especially in those family meal situations that you might want to share with our listeners absolutely i've actually learned from the family dinner project uh, which is from a harvard study and it talks about um, having the opportunity to talk with your kids and engage with them they're more likely to do better in school and increase their grade point average uh, they're more likely not to get pregnant early or to do drugs, and it really raises their self-esteem. So when you think about just those statistics alone, alone it's worth it. Um, but also, playing games is really important. Uh, we sit down when, with my kids, and we'll play I Spy, or we do um, something that my daughter calls like the riddle game, where she'll describe something and we have to figure out what she's describing. Or we'll simply use that time to talk about our day. If we're in a rush and or my kids have, you know, a practice later on, we'll sit down and have dinner a little earlier around 530. And as we sit and talk, we'll talk about, well, what do you want to do in practice? What are your two or three goals? And so we use that time to talk, to engage, to express our feelings and our values. But I find that over time, my kids look forward to dinner time. They look forward to the time that we sit down as a family. And in fact, if we ever are having food on the go, they don't really interpret that as dinner because we'll get home after we've eaten and they're like, mom, so what's for dinner? Like what? We just had dinner. Um, so I love the fact that I get a chance to stop at Boston Market, maybe on the way home from work, grab a meal and I can bring all of this food to the table, whether it's a rotisserie chicken, vegetables, a balanced meal, but also give them the time where I'm like, hey, turn the television off put the iPads away, let's sit and let's talk. And they really love that as well. You know, I think that's so important because, you know, there's times, and you and I both know that as a parent, you know, with everything that, the, uh, that your kids get into, sometimes you do have to find, find meals yes. on the go. And there's so many options out there that are not healthy. So having yes. options like Boston Market, you know, out there with balanced op um, options is so important. So it's good. I'm glad that, uh, that they're spreading this message today. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Chris. It's, it really is, um, I think, an educational, an opportunity to educate yourself, an opportunity for us to bring families back together to engage and finding some purpose for that. So they can log on to www.bostonmarket.com to find out more information, find out where there's locations near them, and also to find out a little bit more about the Family Dinner Project at Harvard. That's, that's great. That's great tips. Are there tips on that site, too, about uh, maybe conversation starters or, or possible games that, like you were talking about, that um, so if they're, they just don't know where to start? Yes, absolutely. And that's what I love about what you can learn from all of the Harvard um, studies and that project in particular gives you ideas of how to start these conversations about different games that you can play. So it is very educational. And sometimes, like I said, we, we, we do a lot of this even in the car. When you're in the car, you, you might pick up the food, but you need the time to engage with your family and have these conversations. But really trying to get to a dinner table and, and make this sort of a tradition, if you will, you will be surprised how much your children will open up. And I think I have an advantage because we're starting, my kids are only five and eight. When you think about those teenage years, you know it's a little bit more difficult to get the kids to open up if you haven't already started sort of this routine. So I'm excited that we've done this at a young age so my kids will sort of be programmed and already know this is what to expect at dinner time. Yes, and I think that's completely the case. You have to start early and you have to have those conversations often so they're, they're used to it. And, uh, and having those car conversations, I think, definitely helps. Uh, yes. <laughs> I've, I've read that many, many times, and I've heard many, many people say that about because they, they can't walk away. Exactly. So <laughs> some really good opportunities. They have some meaningful conversations about, about topics that you, you need to talk about um, where they can't specifically walk away from you, yes. especially as they start getting older. Absolutely. Well, hopefully well, the dads who are listening will, will also see the importance of that because sometimes we, you have some parents where there's a single household or the dad kind of comes in a little bit late from work, but finding time for everyone to make it to the table is very important. I agree. I completely agree. It's you know one of the favorite times of my day when I can get home from work and be able to sit down with the family here about the day. And hopefully it's a, it's a day where the kids are not saying, uh, where I say, how was your day? And they're like, uh, it was okay. Yeah. I'm like, well, no. <laughs> Let's talk a little deeper than that. Well, you can also ask, pose the questions, and um, you know, again, going back to the to the Harvard project, it's like, ask them, tell me three things about your day. Yeah. What did you like about your day? Well, tell me three things you didn't like about your day, or what could you have done better, or what were some of the decisions you made? Or sometimes I even ask my kids, what did you tell me two or three things you did for someone else today? So sometimes the question is very important um, to, to get them to open up about it without getting one word answers. But I think the more that they get used to having this sort of dialogue, the more they get around a healthy meal, they will begin to look forward to it and they'll start to call you on it. You know, if I have my phone, just like if I'm expecting a certain email and they're like, mom, put your phone up. I'm like, oh, okay, my bad, my bad. You know, so I, I think the kids will really learn to love to engage in that. I think those are all amazing mm -hmm. tips. I really appreciate you sharing those with our listeners today, and I appreciate your time. And, you know, it was wonderful being able to talk to you. And, again, as I said at the very beginning, you know, thank you for everything that, you, that you've done for, for I'm going to say, girls in general, because <laughs> I'm the father of girls. But, but also um, thank you for the message that you're sharing today. All right. Thank you so much, Christopher. I appreciate your time. Yes, thank you.